Good evening. This is Peter Lorry. Hey, did you ever have a nightmare? Did you ever go through a horrible experience that seemed very real? Yes, sometimes reality and unreality seem as one, and you're not so sure anymore. Like the fellow tonight in a mystery playhouse. about somebody else, which is almost as bad. This gentleman had a particularly realistic one. In fact, he didn't know for the life of him whether or not it really happened. But you listen for yourself to the unfolding of William Irish's strange and intriguing story of a, of a man who dreamed he committed murder and, and woke up to the fact that maybe he actually had... Listen to Nightmare. Dodge, Homicide Division. Clip, this is Vince. Ah, oh, hello, kid. What's on your mind? Clip, Clip, I've got to see you now, as soon as possible. Uh, look, kid, I'm working. What's so important? You can't tell it on the phone. Cliff, I think I killed a man last night. I don't know whether I dreamed it or it actually happened. That's why I've got to see you. You killed somebody? I can't believe it. Not you, Vince. Well, listen, meet me in the office in 15 minutes. Whatever you do, don't tell anybody else about this. Go ahead, Vince. Tell me some more about this dream of yours. Well, after that, Cliff, all I remember is the white face. The face of a woman. Beautiful, but, but false somehow. You see, we were in a room with nothing but doors. Eight doors, frame to frame, with no wall space between. Well, I, I opened one of the doors, and suddenly someone rushed at me. We struggled, and he forced me to the floor. As we fought, he said to the woman, hand me that knife. Well, I raised my hand to defend myself, and suddenly I felt the handle of something. I realized the woman had put the knife into my hand by mistake. And then I... Then you stabbed him. Yeah. Then I stabbed him. Well, after that, the woman disappeared, and I felt I had to hide the body. Well, behind one of the eight doors, there was a closet. I propped the body inside, and I locked the door. Then I went out of the house. That's horrible. I can't get it out of my mind. But what makes you think any of this actually happened? It's an unpleasant dream, sure, but it's not unusual. Lots of people dream they kill someone. But when you dream, do you wake up with big scratches on your wrist like this one? What are you asking me to believe? You got up in your sleep and you killed somebody? A scratch on your wrist proves nothing. I admit that, but... Then when I got out of bed this morning, I... Here, I found this button. Now, wait a minute. You're not going to tell me that button came off in your hand while you were wrestling with that guy in the dream. That's the way it happened. That I refuse to believe. It came off your shirt. I could never afford pearl buttons. You know that. Not real pearl. Now, listen to me, Vince. I don't want to hear any more of this. If I weren't your brother-in-law, I'd lock you up and call a psychiatrist. How do you think all this makes me feel? Cliff, it w if it wasn't for the key, I could forget the whole thing. Key? Key? What key? I suppose it's something else from your dream. Now, stop it, Vince. I don't want to hear any more. That's right. Go ahead. Get sore. But no matter how angry you get, it doesn't destroy the reality of this key. Look at it. You never see a key like this these days. It's fretted, it's full of scroll work made of brass, old-fashioned, but nevertheless real. And in the dream, if it was a dream, that's the key I used to lock the body in the closet. What's there left to think? Only this, there's somewhere, somewhere there's a door that this, this key belongs to. And behind that door, there's a dead man, and I don't know where. My Lord, I don't know where. Or who he is, nor how and why it happened. Now, look, kid. It's just one of those cockeyed dreams that happen to people, that's all. Ah, if it'll make you feel any better, you can go in the teletype room and watch the reports, Vince. Every crime committed in this state is reported on those machines. Maybe you can identify yourself with some criminal and get this thing off your chest. I'll join you later. 
Haven't you given up yet? Don't be funny, Cliff. There's one here that's possible. A stabbing in a town called Clarksburg. Clarksburg? Yeah. There's no transportation up there. You never did learn how to drive a car. <laughs> You'd really need supernatural aid to kill somebody up there. Now, wait a minute, Cliff. Here's some more coming in on that stabbing in Clarksburg. It's a description. Uh, killer, five feet nine, weight 150, brown hair, wearing a yellow and green sweater under a brown suit. Hey, Vince, you wear a yellow and green sweater, don't you? Help me, Coy. You gave me that sweater for Christmas. Maybe it's only a coincidence, but you're about five feet nine, weigh about 150. Ah, that couldn't possibly have been you, Vince. Who are you talking for, yourself? I know I found that key in the button in the pocket of my brown suit. You're not kidding anybody. You want to know just as much as I do. Come on, let's get started for Clarksburg. <laughs> Lousy rain. Must be a cloud burst. I can't see a thing. This windshield wiper's broken. Cliff, do you know where we are? We've been lost for the past five minutes. I don't even remember how we got on this road. Well, I'm going to roll down the window. Getting wet's better than crashing into something. Hey, Cliff. Yeah? Take the next road to the left. That'll get us to Clarksburg. How do you know it'll get us to Clarksburg? I thought you said you'd never been out this way before. Well, I, I don't know how I know. All of a sudden, everything looks familiar to me, as if I'd been over this same road before. I just know you've got to turn left at the next road. Stop here, Cliff! Stop here! Hey, what's the big idea? You're trying to kill somebody grabbing the brake that way? That house, Cliff. There with the big porch. That's the house with the eight-room door. How do you know that's the house? But you said you'd never been out here before. I've never been here before in my life. Unless... Unless it happened in your dream, is that it? Well, I think this is all crazy. We'll soon know for sure. Come on. We're going in and see whether there's an eight-doored room or not. Funny the front door wasn't locked, Cliff. Never mind that. How do you know the eight-doored room is upstairs? I, I just know, that's all. Cliff, I think it's this room right here. This is it. This is the place, all right. Count them. One, two, three, four, five. Eight doors. Where's that key? It's right here in my pocket. You'll have to get it out. I can't. My hands are all wet. Perspiration. Stop acting like a baby. You're sweating all over. There's the key. Now, which door? That one, I think. <sighs> There's nothing there. Not now, there isn't. But there was something there. What? Look. There's blood on the wall. Oh, Lord. How do you believe me? Now do you understand that I wasn't joking when I told you about my dream? Sure, I believe you. I believe you dreamed you killed somebody and stuffed them in the closet there. I believe you never saw this place before. That you intuitively knew which road to take and which house to come to. What do you take me for, a dope? I wasn't lying to you, Cliff. Honest, I wasn't lying. You came to me for help, didn't you? But you didn't have guts enough to come clean to say, Cliff, I went out to a place last night and killed a guy for such and such a reason. No, you cook up a dream trying to take advantage of me because I'm married to your sister. No, Cliff. Abusing my gullibility because I like you. Making a fool out of me. Cliff, I wasn't lying to you. Everything happened just as I told you it did. How I happen to know this house was here, I don't remember. You've got to believe Shut me, Shut up. Cliff. The dream's over now and baby's awake. You're going to start all over from scratch, you and me. I'm going to get the facts out of you. Please, Cliff, let go of my shoulder. You're hurting me. What were you doing here last night? I never was here before. I never saw it until I came here with don't you. Don't lie. Every time you lie, you're going to get something like this. <laughs> Please, 
if I'm half crazy already without you beating me Who up. was the guy you did it to? What was his name? I tell you, I don't know. I don't know. Are you going to answer me, Vince? I can't. You're asking me things I can't answer. Who was the guy? Why did you kill him? I've handled close mouth guys before. You're going to tell me if I have to slap it out of you. Right in this spot where you killed somebody else. Cliff, please. Please don't hit me again. What was that? It sounded like a door slam. And there's somebody else in this house. Which door did we come in? I don't know. One of the eight. All right, you guys, we've got you covered. Back up against that door there. One false move and I'll drop you. Haven't you found what you're looking for yet? Yeah, I guess I've seen enough. The stuff in your wallet identifies you. Cliff Dodge, Homicide Division. Why didn't you say you're a detective? It's nobody's business. Okay, okay. Wagner's my name. I'm the sheriff around here. When I see people monkeying around a house where a murder's just been committed... Murder? But... You found the body? Yeah. As a matter of fact, there were two murders. A man was killed and stuffed in that closet over there. We found the other body outside. A woman. Wasn't dead when she was found, but she was dying. Run over by a car. Deliberately. The car was run back and forth over her body. She said a few things before she died. Told us all about the other body in the closet. And gave us a pretty good description of the killer. She said the same person murdered the man in the closet and deliberately ran over her body with a car? No, but what else is there to conclude? Yeah, poor Mrs. Fleming... She owned this house, expected her husband home from South America tonight. She was a flirt, but even so, a very charming woman. You don't happen to have a picture of this woman, this Mrs. Fleming, do you? There's one in the next room, that door behind you. Open the door, Vince. I can't, Cliff, I can't. Open the door. Please, Cliff. Open the door. That's her, that big picture on the left. Pretty, wasn't she? Cliff, that's her... Well, now what's the matter with him? He's fainted. Can't stand the sight of people who've been murdered, even if it's only a picture. Give me a hand with him, will you? There. Now, do you feel any better, kid? Yeah. Yeah, I feel all right. Cliff. Cliff, that picture... It was the same woman. The woman from the dream. Also, the woman who was run over and over with an automobile. But I can't drive, Cliff. You know I can't drive. Yeah, if it hadn't been for that, I'd have turned you over to Wagoner for murder. Did the sheriff leave? Yeah, he left. But I still don't believe that stuff about a dream. Are you sure you didn't leave something out? Some small detail? No, no, no. I told you everything, Cliff. I was tired. I went to bed early. I fell asleep. That is right after Mr. Berg closed my door. Berg? You didn't mention any Mr. Berg before. Well, he moved into our rooming house about a month ago. Why did he come into your room? Well, the lights went on the blink. I remember he was carrying a candle. How was Berg holding that candle? Well, the flame was right in front of his eyes. I I remember staring at it. I, I was very tired, Cliff. I don't remember everything. And Berg, he said you're very tired, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah, now that you mention it, he did say that. Good. Now, have you ever seen this picture? No. No, but the, but the man looks familiar. Say, that looks like Berg. I never saw him so well dressed, but that's Berg, all right. I found this picture in this room. Here? In this room? You, you found Berg's... What are you driving at? Sense, reason, logic, sanity. The man you identify as Berg also happens to be Mr. Fleming, the husband of the woman who was killed last night. Berg is Fleming and Fleming is Berg? Now, I'm really going out of my mind. It's simple to a flat foot. I figure that Fleming pretended he went to South America. He took a room in your rooming house under the name of Berg. And tonight, he's pretending to return from South America. At least Wagner said he's expected. And last night, Fleming came back here and murdered his wife? But, but who killed the other one? The man? You did. But you didn't know you were doing it. Oh, I did kill someone after all. I am a murderer. I still don't understand how it happened. All sir. right, kid, relax. Because we're going to find out tonight. Find out? Right. 
Now, if Fleming comes home, as his wife expected him to do, you're going to be waiting in this room for him. Waiting with a gun. That won't do any good, Clem. It might after you've learned a few answers. Now, I'm going to tell you exactly what to say to Fleming, word for word. You might not understand, but you're going to memorize the things I tell you to say word for word. Memorize? Yeah, because your life depends on it. Cliff, you're not going to leave me here alone, are you, Cliff? There'll be nothing I can do to help you, kid. If everything goes right, you'll come out of this scot-free. If anything goes wrong, that's the end. Now, Fleming will probably come up those stairs at the far end of the hall. He had better stand over here. The first thing to remember, let him speak first. How did you get here? You showed me the way, didn't you? You... You remembered coming here? You're lying. Who brought you here? Who came with you? Just this gun. That's impossible. You... You had the look, the typical look. Why did you do everything you were told to do? I wanted to see where it was all leading. I thought there might be some good in it for me later. You... You purposely pretended? You mean you went ahead and consciously killed? I figured you'd pay off heavy afterwards to keep me quiet. I found your wife and her lover just as you said I would. It was easy. I should have known my control wasn't perfect when I saw my wife come running out of the house. She saw my car, came toward me. I I waited, then gave it the gas. I killed the man, and you killed your wife. You wanted them both dead, didn't you? Yes, yes, but I didn't want to have to kill her myself. I loved her, but, but I hated her. She said I was too old for That's her. what I wanted to hear. What? That's it, to hear you convict yourself. What, what did you... I was lying to you. Your control was perfect. You hypnotized me easily. I guess I've got a weak will or something. Well, then what are you... I was lying to you. I was hypnotized, all right. I happen to see your picture here in the house. I recognized you as Berg. And now I can't clear myself before the law ever. And you're going to pay for doing that to me now. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Don't, don't, don't do that. Don't, don't, don't shoot. Now, look, look, look. Here, here, I have a watch. See it? Solid gold inset with diamonds and rubies. It's worth $20,000. It's yours if you'll let me go. Stop dangling it that way. What are you trying to do? Now, listen to me. Give me another minute. A minute by the watch. Uh, stay where you are. Now, don't move. You... You don't want to shoot, do you, my friend? You wouldn't want to smash this beautiful, lustrous watch. A golden, shining little timepiece. You can't take your eyes from it, can you? Please, don't. I'll take it away. It's shining in my eyes. But you love it. You're fascinated by it, aren't you? And now you're tired... You're very tired. And that gun is much too heavy for you to hold. Just drop the gun to the floor. And it won't be so heavy anymore. Just drop the gun. Drop the gun. My control is perfect. Here, take this notebook and this pencil. Take notebook, pencil. Right as I dictate. I am wanted for the murder of two people at the Fleming house. I wanted to murder two people at the Fleming house. They are bound to get me, so I take this way out. They are bound to get me, take way out. Sign your name. There. Now give me the notebook and the pencil. Now pick up your gun again. Hurry. That's it. Now, put the barrel of the gun in your mouth. Put the barrel of the gun in your mouth! Good. Now, pull the trigger. Pull the trigger. How is he, Sheriff? He's dead. Well, we just made it in time. I didn't think he'd try anything like that. Vince. Mm. Mm. Vince. Come out mm. of it, boy. Uh, I'm all right. It's just that everything's hazy. Fleming really threw a trance on you. Mm. You were just going to blow your own head off when I plugged Fleming. Had to. 
Only way I could break the spell in time to save you. You shot Fleming? Cliff, did I do it all right? Did I do everything you told me to do all right? Perfect. I had a hunch it was hypnosis the minute you told me about the candle. But how was I going to prove it? Only by having you come up against Fleming. That's why I left you here. Wagner and I were in the basement with a dictaphone. We put a microphone in the ventilator. I didn't want to make you nervous. That's why I didn't tell you about it. Then I'm... I'm free? I, I won't be tried for murder? Not around here, you won't. I'm sheriff here. This crime is solved. Oh, thank heaven for that. I don't think I could go through a court trial. One nightmare in a lifetime is enough. <laughs> was Nightmare. Tonight's performance in a mystery playhouse. And now, for heaven's sake, let's get off that nightmare. Let's walk down to the green room, huh? For a gander at what sweetness and light is in store for you next time. <laughs> always sweet, always light. You know what? <laughs> Our players are rehearsing there, so follow me, please. Come. Come, come. <laughs> it would have been hard to convince Anne at first. Easy enough for me to say, we have to get rid of Oli. But Oli was Anna's brother. We talked it over on the cliff near the land. We have to, Anna. We have to go through with it. Oh, Richard, there must be some other way. The way things are now, everything's hopeless. You know that. With the paint formula cleared, we can be married. Richard, I love you so much. I'd do anything for us. But, but this, this is... Murder? Huh. You needn't look at it that way, darling. So far as you're concerned, Oli will just uh, disappear. But suppose something goes wrong. Suppose you're convicted. Not a chance. You can't convict a man for murder until you find the body. And they'll never find Oli. We must, Anna, we must. Very well, Richard. When? When will you... The moment Oli finishes the formula, it's almost ready now. I'll have to do it that instant to make my alibi hold. Today, tomorrow, soon, anyhow. Everything else is ready. I love you above everything else in the world, Richard. I love you enough for even... Have a peanut, friend? No. No, I'm snoozing, huh? Traveling on trains makes some people sleepy. Not me. Been on trains all my life. Never get sleepy. Going far? Satan's Point, Maine. Satan's Point? Never heard of it. Must be a devil of a small place. <laughs> what I said. Satan's Point. Devil of a small place. Good, huh? Have a peanut? <laughs> Devil of a place. <laughs> Devil of a place. Devil of a place it was that day. We went over every detail again and again until our story was perfect. A lot depended on the story we constructed. A lot depended on telling it well. I told it well. To the police in Maine and to the alienists in Boston. I started the story with the morning of October 11th in Oli's laboratory by the sea. Right, hold on. This is my last mixture. It will be ready in a few minutes, and I want your eyes to be well rested. Think you've got it this time, Oli? No, there's no longer any doubt. When these pigments are mixed, I will paint a square board. It will look like a dirty green to my eyes. And to mine? To yours, and those of millions of others who are colorblind. Red. Red that you have only imagined till now. Red of the rose. Red of a sunset. Red of fire. Red of blood. I put the blindfold on. I could sense all his tenseness. He'd worked 15 years to make this moment arrive. But just from all I can see, a miracle is about to take place. But I confess to one great fear. What's that, Ollie? 
I'm not afraid the formula is wrong. I'm afraid for you. For me? Yes. I have to warn you, Richard. I don't know. No one knows what mental reaction takes place when a person who has never seen color before suddenly does. You... You mean that I could be affected? You could be. You see, red excites even normal people. It vibrates in the brain. But you... Let's have a look, Holy. Now, Richard, when you take the blindfold off, look straight ahead of you. The board is right before your eyes. Look, Richard, and when you do, start talking right away. I want your immediate reaction. Okay, here it goes. Look. See, Richard. Look at red. Look. Say something. Talk, Richard, talk. Say something I couldn't. It's hard enough to recall the little that I do. I was staring straight ahead of me at a square board. Nothing happened for a brief instant. And then I caught my breath sharply. My eyes dried. They burned. I closed them, but the patch of exquisite color seared my brain. A single hot flashing stab of pain pierced my head. And then I felt a surging power, a physical power, grip me. Talk. And Oli's voice reached me, jabbed at me. My whole being seemed to focus on his voice. I had to choke it off. I instantly recall reaching for him across something and finding his throat. And then... Then nothing more. Nothing but the breaking of glass and a sensation of violent action. Motion and action that lasted long after the voice stopped. Then I felt cold air lashing at me. I was carrying something limp and heavy. There's a point of rock outside the house. It juts over the sea. I stood there for I don't know how long. The first clear thing I recall is identifying Anna's voice coming toward me. Richard! Richard! Darling, what are you doing? Richard! Your hands! Something died in me. I sagged to the ground, moaning. Anna. Anna, I'm afraid. I'm afraid. What do you suppose all this is, huh? Sounds like somebody got themselves murdered, doesn't it? Well, hmm. that was an appetizer for our next piece to your tray. Mm. And that old master chef. The laughing boy of the inner sanctum, Raymond, is going to serve it up to you. Mm, yes. Raymond's going to be here next time in company with his fellow creeps in another attempt to scare the living daylights out of you. So why not humor the young creep and be around when we open the Squeaking door to the inner sanctum. Mm-hmm. This is Peter Laurie closing the doors of the mystery playhouse. Good night. Sleep tight. This is the Armed Forces Radio Service.